Well, the standards for judging uh, will vary um, with different juries, and that's why uh, this is such a good jury in that there were 12 different uh, expert people coming from different backgrounds with different expectations. So the interesting thing about this particular jury is that it was almost unanimous for the goal, and that never happens. So um, this was a particularly um, varied jury, and I'm just really happy with um, the result. Well, this um, biennial has grown enormously. I was here in 2000, and 17 countries were represented. Now, uh, 14 years later, 2014, there are 41 countries. That's an enormous increase of interest uh, internationally. and. Um, it's become a, a very big event for artists to be accepted because early it wasn't known uh, you were invited to uh, submit or to bring your work and then as the years went by the jurying got a little bit more difficult for people um, uh, expectations were raised because um, the, the uh, Chinese fiber art learned from the Europeans and the Europeans and Americans and uh, other countries learned from the Chinese so you have this um, explosion of ways of doing fiber art because when it was 2000 most of it was tapestry and actually I tried not to come because my work is more um, uh, layered textile, layered constructions, often called quilts. So, but they said, no, I fit in the tapestry mode, but uh, I really didn't. But it was such a great experience. I became very um, involved in the Biennale. I've never missed one, and each time I have more uh, responsibilities as a juror, uh, as an advisor, and uh, I've watched the, not only the jury process grow, uh, the work that is uh, shown in each successive Biennale has become more exciting and more exciting. I, um, I think it's one of the top two uh, fiber art exhibitions uh, currently available to artists internationally and that's a, a big thing to say. Um, the fiber arts in China uh, it's been up and down. I see a lot of experimentation. Um, uh, uh, some of the work is not refined but next time the artist will have more experience and, and it will get more refined and more refined. Um, some of the work is um, uh, based on tradition, maybe not cutting edge, but still very fine. But the future of fiber arts is where the cutting edge is. People who are experimenting, doing different things, uh, trying new processes, uh, success and failure, all of that, just like high tech. Um, and, and then that's another thing. The materials are changing. Uh, I mentioned in, in a talk yesterday that the first uh, Biennale, we, we just got letters in the mail. Uh, now, it, the internet, and in all of in intervening years, uh, it's gotten um, uh, easier and easier to, uh, to reach different artists, and the interest has grown because of the availability of putting out the information in the internet. Um, it's, it's just a whole different world. So I expect from this, when people see the prize winners from this Biennale, I think it's going to make some people, if we have an expression in America, up their game. They're going to have to get uh, tougher, um, be more adventuresome, um, and so they, they can learn by what they see. And this venue is so fantastic in that the walls are large, uh, people can get back and look at the work. Um, it's, it's a thrilling uh, venue for work. So I'm just really happy to b have been the, I guess you called me the president of, of the jury. I just uh, was there to keep people in line. <laughs> I, well, I'd like to talk about fiber art. I think it's the most inclusive art. We see now that um, it's accepted in all museums across the world and uh, showing in galleries and so forth. Um, 
many painters have come to the fiber arts because they can be more experimental. It, it, uh, there's something about the fiber arts that draws people to them, and every artist wants an audience. There are so many painters, so many sculptors, but not nearly as many fiber artists. And so there's room for expansion and uh, ad adventurous uh, using of materials. So we love that other media come to the fiber arts because they bring a different aesthetic, uh, a different kind of courage, and so we all learn from that cross-fertilization. But I have to say that the most exciting place to be in the arts today uh, is the fiber arts because it's the biggest umbrella there is and um, artists uh, can almost breathe uh, uh, with excitement because they can uh, bring materials that they couldn't say bring in in their other media so it's uh, it's I can't see any other umbrella that I want to be in, although a lot of painters look at my work and say, well, it's very painterly, and, but I say, but you, you can't do the layering that I do, and uh, that kind of thing. So it's a, it's a nice um, place to be, to be able to uh, talk to other media and make them sort of uh, want to try your media. So I don't see that, that blurring uh, edge is, is not there. What it is, is this exciting cross-fertilization where new things can happen. And you see that in the high-tech world, you see it in the biotech world, and so why not the fiber art world?